Pirates of the Caribbean has always been a super interesting series for me when it comes to film criticism because aside from the first movie, pretty much all critics seem to hate it. Now, I started reading and watching film reviews around the time that the third movie came out, and I was really surprised by how much the critics hated it. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about that for a little bit. Okay, so here's how pretty much every review in the history of all time uh, about a Pirates of the Caribbean movie starts out. So the first movie came out, and I was a big fan of it. But then after that, they really just went downhill from there and never got better. Don't believe me? Go on YouTube and type in Pirates of the Caribbean review and just watch for a little while. You'll see. And this always really surprised me because I have never met someone in my personal life who did not love Pirates of the Caribbean 1, 2, and 3. After that point, it's a bit of a different story, but we'll get into that in a minute. So as I was just saying, everybody I know has a really great fondness for these movies. And I was curious to see if this was just the truth within my little bubble. So I did some research into this to sort of uh, refute or affirm what I believe. And Rotten Tomatoes sort of confirmed what I have been thinking uh, for a while. Uh, The critic response is reflected pretty perfectly in what I have seen. The first one has a 79% fresh, and then they trend downwards by film to 54%, then 45%, 32%, and then finally 30%. Yeesh. But the audience score shows a greatly different story. The first one has 86%, and then the second and third ones both hold strong at 72, then 4 is 54%, and 5 is 61. The main difference in that specific part is that critics seem to think 4 is better than 5, and audience vice versa. Regarding why audiences don't like the fourth one very much, I've seen it said perfectly in some review a long time ago that On Stranger Tides feels like Jack Sparrow fan fiction. I could not agree more. In my opinion, the series should not have continued past three, so we're just going to be talking about the first three because that's where my confusion really sets in here. But really, I just don't get where the critics' hate for Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and Networld's End comes from. Are the movies long? Yeah, but who cares? I mean, so were Return of the King and Blade Runner 24-9, and critics love both of those, so length doesn't really seem to be the issue here. Are they really wacky and absurd? Sure, yes, that's not your cup of tea, that's fine, but I always thought that was kind of part of the charm of this series. And from what I saw, the movies also boasted pretty excellent character growth and progression, especially for Will and Elizabeth, who are the two protagonists of the original three movies. Will grows to have a more complex understanding of the world, realizing that everything is not black and white, and that a man who is a pirate can also be a good man and worth saving. Elizabeth goes from living a privileged but outrageously restricted lifestyle and becomes a capable fighter and eventually a leader by the time the third movie ends. And through their growth, they're able to eventually break through the societal rules that are keeping them apart from each other and ultimately have a pretty strong romance story because of it. And the films are also mature enough not to give them the perfect Hollywood couple ending. They only get to spend one day a decade with each other. That's, you know, kind of heartbreaking. Jack is, yes, a relatively static character with only a few moments of growth throughout the series, but... He is a side character meant to influence the two protagonists, so that's actually okay, at least in my opinion. A lot of people used to say that Will and Elizabeth were boring when we were watching the first three movies, but then um, when we saw the fourth Pirates movie, the one without them, we kind of all realized how important they were to the story. For the record, I never found them boring, but some people did. There are also a lot of really unique and memorable action sequences throughout all three of these movies. And considering so many action scenes in current movies basically boil down to two people just punching at each other for a while, you'd think that the action scenes in these films would be a bit refreshing and sort of earn them some points. Some examples of unique action scenes in this movie would be the climax of the first film, where the heroes are utilizing the fact that all of Barbosa's men turn into skeletons when they're in the moonlight. You know, the part where Will and Elizabeth grab one of the henchmen, shove a grenade in his chest when he's a skeleton, then push him out of the moonlight so he can't get it out and he blows up. Uh, the cage escape from about midway through the second movie is another good example. We have a bunch of people running away from a tribe in a giant little hamster ball cage. The wheel fight between Norrington, Jack, and Will, where they're all fighting on the rolling wheel throughout the island. And also the fight where Elizabeth and co. have to share two swords among three people in order to fight off all the fish people. Plus, you just have great world building in each of these movies. You have the whole Shipwreck Cove place, a Tortuga City. Yeah, Tortuga's real. It wasn't like that in real life, though. Just lots of cool fantasy and adventure elements that you don't really see in movies all that much anymore. 
And yeah, I recognize the plots are pretty absurd and the plans that the characters make seem pretty outlandish, but... You're mad. Thank goodness for that, because if I wasn't, this would probably never work. So is it possible that nostalgia is just clouding my judgment on this series since I saw them all when I was a little kid? I mean, yeah, I guess it's possible, but I'm usually not affected by nostalgia in that way. Maybe my nostalgia for the old films helped me enjoy Pirates 5 more than I should have, but it wouldn't have affected my enjoyment of the old ones. I mean, I used to like Attack of the Clones when I was a little kid because I saw it in theaters. Had some nostalgia for that, but I've seen it since, and I have come to the realization a long time ago that it's not very good. I've seen these Pirates movies loads of times over the years, and I never end up liking them any less. Plus, you have all the folks who were parents and my friends and me who also love them. They weren't little kids when they saw them, obviously. Ultimately, the point I'm trying to make is I just I don't get it. I don't get why these, these movies get so much hate. Why is there such a strong disconnect for critics with these movies? And, yeah, I know critics are not some amorphous entity that all have the same opinion. That's not what I'm saying. It just seems that almost no critics enjoy Pirates 2 and 3, and it really doesn't make sense to me at all. I've been thinking about that topic for a long time, wanted to get it out there. Uh, so let me know. Do you guys like Pirates of the Caribbean? If so, which ones? Are you more in line with the critics where you don't think most of them are that good at all? Um, but yeah, anyway, if you like this and you want to see more of what I do, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. Go.